Welcome to this video. This is uh, Mark Stand and myself, and uh, together we're taking a group of people to the Holy Land. And uh, we hope you enjoy this video. It should take about uh, half an hour altogether, uh, but it'll give you an opportunity just to enjoy it and uh, listen to all the events. And uh, it's a real delight to have Mark with me, who's the vicar at St Margaret's. Mark, tell us about the trip and what you're looking forward to. Well, I've been a vicar for over 25 years now, but I've never been to Israel. So for me, it's a question of going to the places where Jesus originally walked and ministered, died, was raised again, because I believe that will bring it uh, to life in a way that perhaps will be really helpful. And so I'm really looking forward to it. I'm looking forward to seeing the sights, but also having my own faith deepened uh, mm. through this pilgrimage with 20, 28 other people. It was an hour and a half late, but we're nearly there, and we're very pleased about it. This is the church of Paternoster, and it's on the site of the Mount of Olives, where Jesus ascended into heaven. But it's also claimed to be the site of Luke chapter 6, where we get another version of the Lord's Prayer. The iconic view of uh, Jerusalem from the Mount of Olives where you can see the Golden Dome, which is the Dome of the Rock, but that's where the temple stood. This is the route down from the top of the Mount of the Olives towards the Garden of Gethsemane, past Dominus Flavit, and uh, Christians from all over the world are coming here. And the place, as you might expect, is crowded. It's the 2nd of November, and the weather is beautiful, must be about 20 degrees. Well, this is the Garden of Gethsemane with the olive trees, which is the site where Jesus um, uh, said to his father, if it be possible, take this cup from me. But as we know, um, the cup wasn't taken from him, and Jesus said, uh, not my will be done, but your will be done. According to traditions, when Jesus was tempted by the Satan and he took him to the pinnacle of the temple, it was here on this uh, corner. This is taken from the site of the high priest's house in Jerusalem. This is where Jesus was tried before the Sanhedrin after Gethsemane. This is a stone staircase that is contemporary to the time of Jesus. So Jesus would have actually walked on these stairs, which is quite amazing. The Wailing Wall in Jerusalem. This is the base of Solomon's Temple. And what we see are dozens and dozens, if not hundreds, of Jewish people coming to pray at the Wailing Wall. And it's all that's left of the Temple of Solomon. The Via Dolorosa, this is the route that Jesus would have walked after his trial from Pilate on his way to Calvary. This is the second station of the cross and it doesn't look anything very special. There's nobody standing here at the moment, but this is the place where Jesus was spat upon, beaten and flogged. Session number three and station number four, they are not mentioned in the Bible. Session number seven on the Via Dolorosa. This is the house of Veronica. This is the pool of Bethesda that we read about in John chapter five, where the man who couldn't get into the water because others got in first when the water stirred, uh, was encountered by Jesus uh, who brought healing. And it's down here somewhere that that event happened.
this is a model of the town of Jerusalem in the time of Jesus. And uh, what we're looking at is the southern edge of the temple and then uh, the residential part of Jerusalem with the house of the high priest, Gallicanto, where we were a little while earlier in the distance. This is what Jerusalem would have looked like in about AD 70 before the Romans came and destroyed it all. This is Qumran, the um, community that uh, wrote down the Dead Sea Scrolls. This is the cave where some of the Dead Sea Scrolls were actually found, where a young Bedouin with a sling and a stone uh, flung his stone into the cave and heard something break, and he discovered that it was the uh, scrolls in there, some leather inside a pot that had broken from which a whole great wealth of biblical resources was found. And not just this cave, but all around, and the caves on the hillsides in the distance, where these uh, scrolls were found. Just turning off the main road that goes to Eilat to go uh, just inland a little bit from the Dead Sea up to Masada. And this is the road up to Masada. Doesn't it look a bleak, barren place? of our group up in the cable car and it's quite an ascent all the way to the top of Masada and we couldn't all quite get on the same uh, cable car so we await for one to come down from the top. This is the top of Masada where a thousand Jewish people at the time of the Jewish revolt in AD 70 came and they lived in this community up here at the top of Masada and you can see the Dead Sea in the distance and uh, to escape the sword of the Romans. The very sad story is that all 900 of them killed themselves, so the Romans uh, eventually, when they conquered, found no one here. The rectangle we see in front of us is where the Roman soldiers camped during the time they were trying to lay siege to Masada. The brave pilgrims of St. Margaret's Angmering have come down to swim in the Dead Sea. And uh, this is the sea that's so salty that you can't actually sink in. It's 29 degrees, it's the 4th of November, and it's about 2 o'clock in the afternoon, Israeli time. This is the garden tomb where it is alleged that uh, Jesus was buried after his crucifixion. And there are people queuing up to go in the garden tomb. And St. Margaret's unfortunately are fairly near the back of the queue. But it's set in the most beautiful garden. We're in the site of shepherd's fields here. And this is where we come to remember where the shepherds were. And uh, although it says shepherd's fields, there's an awful lot of building work that's going on. This is Bethlehem, shepherd's fields. Uh, not much in terms of fields at the moment, but perhaps there in the distance, there's something a little bit more like a field. Well, we had a very nice meal here in uh, Bethlehem. This is the uh, restaurant of the Shepherd's Fields, and we've not been here before, but uh, it's very nice. So he came to live in Bethlehem as well. He went to Egypt, he came back, he came here to learn more Hebrew. In a cafe in Bethlehem, the queue to actually see the precise spot where it is alleged that Jesus was born uh, had a queue lasting an hour. And so some of us decided to go and have an orange juice or a coffee or something similar instead. And we're coming towards the end of our evening walk and we're on the north wall of Jerusalem and it does look a rather interesting place with lots of palm trees and there are the walls behind and they're walking past. Wide scope of colours, sounds, smells, tastes. And what... This is the location of where the Last Supper is alleged to have happened and this is the upper room or in the location roughly of where the upper room is, where Jesus took bread and wine and broke it and shared it, telling us to do it in remembrance of what he has done. This is the Yad Vashem Memorial to the Holocaust which is a museum that contains an explanation of what happened during the Second World War with the Holocaust and the killing of millions of Jewish people. And uh, we're walking into it with a great sense of apprehension about what we're going to see. 
today we're driving north to Galilee and we're going to be stopping at Bethany and then Jericho and the Jordan Valley to see the baptismal site of Jesus. We'll also be seeing the tomb of Lazarus and the home of Mary and Martha. We've come to Bethany. This is the home of Mary and Martha, uh, the place where Jesus often stayed when he came to Jerusalem. And uh, we've had a look at where Mary and Martha might have lived, which is in the church building that uh, you can see there, uh, just uh, ahead. And we're going now to have a look at the tomb of Lazarus. However, as our tour guide has said, it probably isn't the tomb of Lazarus, but uh, nevertheless, perhaps we'll have a bit of fun just imagining. Please, if you want, but promise me you won't stay there for four days. <laughs> <laughs> our tour guide, Nahel, has encouraged us to go into the tomb of Lazarus, but not to stay there for four days. One thing that Niall explained to us is that uh, the ancient Jews believed that after three days the soul was no longer with the body. And therefore when Jesus raised Lazarus after four days, he was well and truly dead. And there's quite a few brave souls who are quite happy to go down into that tomb. Hope, let's hope for no broken ankles. <laughs> Here we are down by the River Jordan. This is the site where Jesus was baptized. And uh, we're gathering together as a group, and Andy's just about to lead us in some singing. I wonder what we're going to sing. We've come to the Mount of Temptation, and there's a broken down car and two coaches coming from the opposite direction. And people trying to push coaches in one direction or another. There's the broken car, down car, which some uh, heavy men have uh, sorted out. And I think now, at last, we are all on our way after much huffing and puffing. And uh, one of the slightly more amusing incidents of our trip to Israel. And no doubt you can hear behind me lots of shouting and remonstration. This is the Judean desert. This is where Jesus spent 40 days and 40 nights being tempted in the wilderness. On the mountainside up there, you can see a monastery that you can get to by a cable car. We've not gone up on the cable car today. But this is where God was asking Jesus, what sort of Christ are you going to be? Are you going to be a Christ who is waylaid by temptation? Or are you going to obey my voice and my voice only? Amen. The Sea of Galilee from the Ron Beach Hotel with the early morning rising sun glistening against the lake. It does look rather dramatic, but the Sea of Galilee itself seems almost as calm as a mill pond. And looking forward to seeing more of it. This is the church that commemorates the turning of water into wine, the old covenant becoming obsolete and the new covenant being inaugurated. And it's crowded and it's only early in the morning. Uh, all these people here and it's uh, encouraging in a way to see all these people are sufficiently interested to come and hear about the changing of water into wine. In front of me is a stone jar and somebody's going to probably tell us that this is one of the stone jars that from which water turned into wine. Who knows? This is Nazareth and this is um, the place where Jesus was brought up, spent many years of his life. And this is Mary's well, which is the site of where the angel Gabriel visited Mary, so we are led to believe, to tell her that she was going to be the mother of the Lord Jesus. The church that commemorates the Annunciation is a, an Orthodox church. I think it might even be a Greek Orthodox church. And uh, what we see here are some amazing icons for which the Orthodox church is renowned. Beautiful colors. Behind this grill is what is thought to be the home of where Jesus lived in Nazareth, uh, with Mary and Joseph and Jude and James and his other brothers. This is the church on top of the site of Mary's home in Nazareth. It is the site of the carpenter's uh, workshop that Joseph had in Nazareth. 
first century Nazareth olive press. This is the olive press that would have been used uh, to press olives for the first, second and third presses. The weaver will take various things that we recognize and color her wool accordingly. Maybe onion skin for yellow, a yellowish garment. The synagogue in Nazareth. This is what it would have looked like. This is the Mount of Transfiguration where Jesus appeared with Moses and Elijah in his radiant glory. And that's happened somewhere near here. On the Mount of Transfiguration, they built a church and this is it. And it's got a quite an interesting carving of um, Jesus in his glory with Moses and Elijah beside him. This is the Ron Beach Hotel. Very nicely appointed hotel where we stay in Galilee. We're in the reception area and it's our last full day. And we're going to Capernaum and the Mount of Beatitudes. And we're all looking forward to it. The coach is due to arrive any moment. And there's Nael walking across and he's our tour leader. We're walking into Capernaum and it's lovely to see all the flowers here and the trees. And uh, they do make Capernaum a very appealing place to come to. Uh, not only is it the most historic place, but uh, uh, it's also a very pleasant place to come to. And this is the place where Jesus uh, spent a large part of his ministry, where so many of the miracles happened. We're told in Mark's Gospel that all the town came and Jesus healed them all. Well, this is Capernaum, and this is uh, right on the edge of the lake. You can't see it very clearly, but uh, just through there is the lake. That is the outside of the synagogue in Capernaum. And just over here, under this uh, church building, is what is thought to be the earthly home of uh, where Peter's mother-in-law lived and the Holy Family lived in Capernaum. The synagogue of Capernaum, this is where Jesus healed a man with a withered hand. It's also a place where Jesus taught many times. I understand that this particular synagogue dates from uh, 150 years after the time of Jesus, but was built on the same site. And it's good to be here and just imagine all that Jesus did and taught in this place. Now, El, have they ever excavated underneath yes. these particular yes. stones here? One hole is here, and yeah. you see the platform from Jesus' time, and one was there, but they covered it. Mm -hmm. But this, they kept it uncovered, because they are sure that this is synagogue from Jesus' time, mm -hmm. so it's probably the synagogue of Jesus. They wanted the tourists to come and to see. And is the footprint of the ancient synagogue exactly the same as this? More or less, yeah. A slightly surreal experience. It absolutely is tipping down with rain and we're about to have a communion and we've all come with our water gear, wet gear, and Mark is setting up for a communion and uh, we don't often have rain down here by Galilee but uh, today's the exception. The rain of a few hours ago has abated and it's become beautifully clear and we're at the Mount of the Beatitudes, looking at the Sea of Galilee. And uh, it's got some beautiful trees here. And in the distance, which may not be very visible from where I'm taking this photo, is indeed the Sea of Galilee. Lunch on the Mount of Beatitudes. Only one of us was brave enough to have fish, and it wasn't me. The rest of us have had chicken. But the driver and the guide they get chips as well and coca-cola all right for some it's the sea of galilee from the north shore and it's the place where jesus calmed the storm 
It's the place where he told the disciples to cast the nets on the other side when they'd been fishing all night and caught no fish. It's the place where Jesus walked on water. It's the place where uh, Jesus taught his disciples. They were fishermen, but they were to become fishers of men rather than fishers of fish. Those are the hills of Dalmanutha, now part of the Golan Heights. And that was the area where Jesus encountered Legion, a person who was possessed by many, many demons. And uh, he cast those demons out and they uh, rushed into the sea. And Legion wanted to become a disciple of Jesus, but Jesus wouldn't allow him. And Jesus instead said, go and show the priest what the Lord has done for you. Here we are getting on the boat. And we're going to be going round Not the Sea of Galilee. I wonder what it'll be like. What fun. Gosh, this is a big boat, isn't it? And because we are British, he's putting up a Union Jack. That's very nice of him. God bless King Charles. Looks at the waves and says, quiet, be still. He treats the waves like a sort of disobedient child or an unruly puppy and the waves just die down. This is the Ron Beach Hotel with the most amazing array of different foods, more than you could possibly imagine, different places. It's a massive, great dining area. You go and help yourself and you try not to be too greedy. Someone's having a birthday. What a lovely celebration. Look at that cake. I hope, hope people haven't had too much pudding. It's the final day and we are getting off the bus to see this well-known aqueduct that brought water to Caesarea. Uh, very ancient aqueduct, um, Roman times, and it has a very gradual incline, but Caesarea was unable to produce enough water of its own, so it had this huge long aqueduct to bring it to Caesarea. This is the amphitheatre in Caesarea, and it's an impressive piece of architecture. In fact, it looks as if it's been repaired from ancient times because you could quite easily have a theatrical production in it today. But uh, it's quite near the sea, which is just over there. Till 